Let's head to Wellington now, where about 70 residents were allowed into an off-limits central city apartment block today to retrieve some of their precious belongings after the best part of a month, including, believe it or not, a hungry but very much alive goldfish. Each had about 20 minutes, each resident had about 20 minutes to get in and out of the Maison Cabriolet, apologies because I've almost certainly said that wrong, apartments near the quake damaged Reading Cinema Car Park building, which has been off limits for almost a month. Meanwhile, on the other side of the central city, the cordons along Molesworth Street were reduced and some businesses were able to reopen. Michael Crop checked in to see how everyone is going. Escorted by urban search and rescue workers, residents donned hard hats and fluoro jackets before going into their apartments to retrieve what they could carry. Birth certificates, passports, computers, clothes and a coffee machine were among the must-have items. But for Brittany Goderidge, it was Sir Swims a Lot, her goldfish, that came first. I'm a little goldfish who hasn't been fed for like a month, but he's still alive. So he deserved to be saved, that's what I thought, so... Yeah. What's its name? Sir swims a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and what was the state of his tank? It was gross. It was like green and slimy and well, smelly. Yeah, and so, big cleaning job now. Finn Wardle and Hayley Salmon told me some of what they'd retrieved. Just pretty much clothes. <laughs> um, stuff like food that's been in the fridge. Um, yeah, the necessities, socks, yeah. makeup. <laughs> it felt like. We had ages, so we just started getting other stuff like wine that was in the fridge <laughs> and like bedding, like our duvets because we're moving into a new flat. But Mr Wardle says he's out of pocket and his insurance company is being blasé about it. We can't get insurance on where we're staying, like to pay back where we're staying because our building's not damaged. So they're like, that's how they're getting through the loophole. They're like, well, your building's fine, so we're not going to pay you out for where you all the expenses you have to pay a new accommodation. Nick Pyatt, the fire services assistant area commander, is overseeing the operation. Our role uh, today is to, is to provide support and a bit of capacity for the Wellington City Council, so we're coordinating access into buildings. We're giving the tenants that we take in some assurance that should something happen that they'll be looked after and accounted for. And also, should, should the worst happen, we're, we're on site uh, ready to get into action straight away. The council says it hopes to get a crane to the car park tomorrow and the demolition should start in early January. They'll use the machine that's currently nibbling away at an office block on 61 Molesworth Street where the cordon shrank today. Freeman's bookshop reopened this morning and its owners Lorraine and Tony Freeman say it's been a quiet start. Mrs Freeman hopes sales pick up soon because they've lost tens of thousands of dollars. The worst thing is because we have a lot of Christmas stock in here and it all arrives in November and it's due for payment in December but we haven't got the December sales to pay for that stock. Derek Williams, the ringing master at the Anglican Cathedral on Molesworth Street, says he's pretty desperate to get back in to ring the bells. Bells are a very important part of Christmas. Uh, people traditionally associate bells and Christmas. So, yeah, we're very glad that we can get back and very grateful that they've got on with the demolition. <laughs> in Wellington for Checkpoint, call Michael Crop there, eh?